good afternoon everybody good afternoon can you all hear me and see the screen clearly yes good evening sorry good afternoon can you all hear me Binaya, good afternoon. Nimita, Rajneet, everybody, good afternoon. Please just clarify whether you all can hear me properly and you all can. Yes, thank you so much. So today's class, we are going to discuss two different phylum. That is the phylum Celenterata and phylum Tenophora. In the first lecture, we discussed about the basics of classification. In lecture number two, we discussed about the phylum Porifera. And in this lecture, lecture number three, we are going to discuss about two different phylum. That is phylum Celenterata, which is a bit complex, and phylum Tenophora, which is comparatively easier. This is our telegram group, t.me slash neat underscore biopoint, where daily session updates, regular discussion, polls, and quizzes takes place. Those who are watching the session right now, don't forget to hit the like button. Do share it with your friends and subscribe the amazing platform for more biology lectures. Just give me hearts on the screen to clarify whether you all can hear me properly and you all have liked the session. Just give me hearts on the screen to clarify these two things and let's move on to the session. Come on. Yes, thank you so much. So let's move on to the chapter, the third part of the chapter, Animal Kingdom, that is the phylum, Nidaria. So first thing that you have to know in this chapter, the foremost and the first thing that you have to know in this chapter is that phylum Celenterata is also known as phylum Nidaria. Okay, phylum Celenterata is also known as phylum Nidaria. C is silent. We'll pronounce it as Nidaria. Okay, we would discuss the reasons of both. Why we call them as phylum Celenterata. Why you call them as phylum Nidaria. Everything we would discuss. So, don't get confused if I say to be Nidaria. You can call them either as Nidaria or Celenterata. Okay. Number first point that you have to mark it down. Second thing, Celenterata or Nidaria, they show tissue level of organization. We have already studied that phylum Porifera shows a cellular level of organization. So phylum Nidaria shows tissue level of organization. Nidaria or Celenterata, they show radial symmetry. They are radially symmetrical organism. That is, their body can be divided into two equal halves through any vertical plane. Through any plane, their body can be divided into two different halves. They are diploblastic organism. That is, they have two different layers. They have two different layers. Look, they have endoderm and ectoderm. And instead of mesoderm, they have a special fluid cavity, which is called the mesoglia. Okay, they have two different layers. The outer ectoderm. They have the outer ectoderm and the inner endoderm. Outer ectoderm and inner endoderm are two different portions. Okay, and they are a coelomate organism. That is, they do not have the presence of a coelom. They do not have a zelom. Is this clear? Is this clear? Only one person. Yes, thank you so much, guys. Next is the habit and the habitat. So, they are also aquatic. 
they are also aquatic and mostly marine okay they are mostly marine life forms they may be sessile what do you mean by sessile i told you what is sessile sessile means they are attached okay or attached or they are fixed for example the hydra they are actually the hydra and all they are actually fixed right the hydra and all they are actually fixed right hydra and all they are actually fixed so they are called sessile forms of nidaria they are called sessile but look at the jellyfish jellyfish and all those things they are free swimming they can swim about freely that is why they are known as free swimming form they can either be solitary or colonial they can occur as a solitary unit yes sedentary very good solitary or colonial what is solitary they can occur single or they can occur as colonies they can occur as colonies or come as group they can occur either as solitary like the jellyfish the hydra all those things they can occur as a single unit or else they can occur as a colony they can occur as a colony or a group anyway this can happen okay is it clear yes next is about the digestive system incomplete digestive system what is incomplete digestive system they have only one particular opening this is their opening okay this is their opening only through this particular opening food is taken inside and food the excretion is also taking part okay so they are intracellular digestion they have intracellular as well as extracellular digestion they have intracellular as well as extracellular digestion just imagine guys nidaria or else they are called coelenterata right so i is there so in intracellular digestion e is there that is extracellular digestion okay this is inside the cells intra means what inside the cells extracellular means outside the cell the respiratory system is absent the circulatory system is absent okay the circulatory system is absent the respiratory system is absent digestive system is incomplete okay but since they are incomplete we cannot just count them as an organ level we can count them only as a tissue level of organization only okay because they do not have a well developed or complete digestive system next this is at least 15 times repeated aims question 15 times repeated aims question it can be asked for neat exam also okay very important reproduction okay two different structures are there in uh, sorry in nidaria or coelenterata for reproduction the first structure is known as the polyp there are two structure first one is the polyp second one is the medusae so polyp is one structure medusae is the another structure polyp is a structure that reproduces asexually by Budding. It. 
sage like that do see is a particular structure that develops or reap produce sexually they are actually at okay, let me take out a screen so we are going to structure the freeze sedentary or aiming for the ball while okay um, umbrella over here produces okay Punda. this is a point ask okay and polyp can be converted under certain conditions to medusa and how is that possible polyp reproduces medusa asexually and medusa reproduces polyp sexually is this clear? So guys, this is a table which you have to study. Polyp. Guys, please tell me whether you have understood or not. Polyp and the other form is Medusa. This is the only difficult portion which we are dealing in today's class polyp and medusa first of all let us distinguish between the same polyp is actually a sessile form cylindrical form sessile cylindrical form of organism only one is there that means others haven't understood if you want me to repeat please tell please repeat i'll repeat it and medusa is actually umbrella shape this can be a board examination questions okay distinguish between polyp and medusa umbrella shaped free swimming form okay cylindrical and sessile is the polyp and umbrella shaped free swimming is the medusa look guys you might have also seen structures like this And free swimming like jellyfish, free swimming structures. Okay, so this polyp have the capacity, polyp have the capacity to reproduce itself asexually. And medusa also have the capacity to reproduce itself sexually. But these organisms have a special feature. These organisms have a special feature that is polyp can convert into medusa asexually. And medusa can convert into polyp sexually. Is it clear? We'll go back to the slides and then we'll discuss it again. Look, guys, this is the statement. Oh, my God. Yes. This is the polyp and this is the medusa. Polyp just converts asexually to form. And the medusa is 
sexually converts to form the polyp. of the organism the sexes are separate they are external fertilization is seen development is indirect and what is indirect development last class i told you development is by larva formation development is by larva formation and what is that larva of nidaria called as planula okay What is it? Planula. Is it clear, Nimita? Is it clear, Abhijit? Vinaya? I think only you three are there. Is it clear? The larvae of Nidaria is known as planula. P L A N U L A planula. No. Oh, have to add def haven't understood mastered or should i is it my network problem send a pen this reproduces called cell particular kind of cells the name of the cell is my voice is breaking oh my god right now is it okay Right now, is it okay? Oh my God. Guys, now is it okay? Right now, is it okay? Oh my God. Guys, now is it okay? Right now, is it okay? Okay. Let me reduce the echo. Yes. So, guys, now tell me what is the name of these cells? Yeah, I have reduced. Name the kind of cells. We have studied a name of a particular cell in case of phylum porifera. What is that cell that acts as a unique feature for phylum porifera? Let me see who have read the NCRT, who have listened in the class carefully and is going to answer me with the name of the cell. So in, uh, yes, collar cells, it is collar cells or you can call it as quanocytes. Collar cells or quanocytes are specialized cells which act as unique feature in phylum porifera. Very good. Exactly like that, exactly like the same cell. Here we have specialized cells called nidoblast. Yes, due to the presence of this nidoblast, the organisms are called nidaria. Due to the presence of specialized cells called nidoblast or nidocytes, the organisms are called nidaria. Exactly as you can, you also know that hydra and all comes under this species and this hydra and all have tentacles. So tentacles are finger-like structures which surrounds the mouth of seal and raids, which are used for food capture and defense. Okay. So tentacles are present in case of this organism where you can or this tentacles helps in the food capture and defense of the organism. Okay. You also know like in the hydra and all you will have tentacles. You might have also drawn the structure of hydra in your uh, 10th standard. 
so hydra structure it contains what 10 decals next you have the nidoblast or nidocytes which are the specialized stinging cells nidoblast or nidocytes are the specialized stinging cells which are present on the tentacles and the body previous year need question previous year need question nidoblast and nidoblast or stinging cells which are present on dash they are present on the tentacles and on the body okay they are present on the tentacles look they are present on the tentacle this is actually the cell this is actually the nidocytes or nidoblast they are filled with a poison filled capsule which is known as nematocyst this is actually a fluid filled cavity guys this is a fluid filled cavity if any organism comes to attack this what happens it will inject it have a long thread like structure so it will inject this particular poison inside this nematocyst into that organism which actually gives them defense okay nidoblast is used for anchorage defense and to capture the prey is it clear is the function and the name of the cell its location everything clear i don't know whether abhijit is here or not because i am not receiving any messages just tell me fast we have one more phylum to complete yes so just i'll give a quick recap of this chapter at the last okay so I also told that Nidaria is also known as, guys tell me on the chat box, Nidaria is also known as, Nidaria is also known as, what is the other term for the phylum Nidaria? Nobody? Absolutely, it is Celenterata. It is otherwise known as what? Celenterata. Okay. Why is that phylum known as Celenterata? Because they have a presence of a large gastrovascular cavity. Look, a large body cavity. A large gastrovascular cavity which is known as the Celenteron with an opening mouth on the hypostom the small portion on the top it is known as hypostom clear so i have told you the reason why they are called nidaria why the organisms why hydra and all comes under nidaria because they have specialized cells called nidoblast due to the presence of specialized cells called nidoblast they are called nidaria Due to the presence of a large gastrovascular cavity named as Celenteron, they are called Celenterata. Okay. So guys, this is exactly the figure for a polyp and a medusae. Look, this is the polyp and this is the medusae. Medusae is free swimming, umbrella shaped, whereas polyp is cylindrical shaped. And they are attached. Is it clear? Next, again, we are studying about the same.
unique feature only feature of this particular file it is the presence of of all pan medusa there are two types of body forms in case of nidaria is body forms guys is it okay can you all hear me now guys is it okay can you all hear me yes, now yes perfecto guys yes let me share the screen so that is all about the polyp and medusae next since they have the capacity since they have the capacity to form asexually and sexually there is a particular unique feature for phylum nidaria that is alternation of generation that process of alternation of generation is known as metagenesis very very important metagenesis it is the phenomenon which is shown by some nidarian in which the polyp produces medusa asexually and medusa forms the polyp sexually example for an organism showing metagenesis is obelia okay obelia shows alternation of generation or metagenesis please bookmark this this statement is a frequently repeated question repeated mcq question as well as for your board exam oh you didn't heard about polyp and medusa okay please wait i'll change the slide okay i'll definitely change the slide okay so there are two different forms body forms okay polyp and medusa are actually two different body forms that is polyp is actually a tubular attached asexual form with upwardly directed mouth and tentacles look this is an example for a polyp that is adamsia sea anemone is an example adamsia sea anemone okay is it clear guys can you all hear me please clarify that once now can you all hear me yes so example for polyp like organism is hydra and adamsia they are actually attached to the floral cavity okay they are attached to the floor 
Medusa is actually umbrella like free swimming sexual form with down, downwardly directed mouth and tentacles. Example Aurelia, jellyfish. Look. Okay. So that's all about this particular phylum and some of the examples. I'll give you a particular table regarding the examples. Okay. I'll give you a table regarding the example. You have to take it down. The only thing which you can do is to buy heart. These are all some diagrams. Okay. After this diagram, I'll tell you about the examples which you have to study. Brain corals, pillar corals are there, uh, table corals. All these are different types of sea lanterites only. This is a table coral. You might have seen discovery channels and all those things. This is a staghorn coral. Just looking like the horn of a deer, a reindeer. Okay. Mushroom corals are there. Brain coral. Look, this diagram exactly look like a human brain, right? Mantripora, mushroom coral. This looks like a mushroom. Staghorn coral. Table coral, brain coral, pillar coral. So just imagine how many different organisms are there. How many different types of organisms are there God have created. So just undergo a recap of what we have learned so far. Tissue level of organization. Radial symmetry. Diploblastic organism. Acetylomate. Guys, when you study, when you took it for studies, you have to buy heart this table only because everything what we have discussed comes under this table. After studying this table by heart, you can go with the NCRT. That do things is very important. Next, they are aquatic, mostly marine, sessile and free swimming, solitary and colonial, one second, let me have a bit water. Okay, next, incomplete digestion, intracellular and extracellular digestion, respiratory system is absent, circulatory system is absent, polyp reproduces asexually by budding, medusa reproduces sexually. They are external fertilization. Development is indirect. So guys, tell me what is actually the larval form of Nidaria known as? What is the larval form of Nidarian known as? Just tell me on the chat box. I don't, I think you might have heard about what I told in the last slide. Absolutely, it is planula. You have to buy heart it. Okay, they are, have tentacles with nidoblast, a gastrovascular cavity known as coelenteron with an opening mouth on the hypostom. They show alternation of generation and one more important.
all hear me now? Can you all hear me now? Guys, can you all hear me now? Yes, perfecto. Let me share the screen too so that you all can, we can complete the topics. Lucifer, you're late for the class. What happened? So guys, you have to study all these examples. Okay, you have to study all these examples which are very, very important. Okay, we will take a special lecture on the other extra examples and their common names which are included in your NCRT. So while you read your NCRT, please have a look on the examples on page number 50. Next is the phylum. Tino fora. So we have a small topic left out. So phylum Tino fora. Let's complete it too. Phylum Tino fora is a brand new chapter. Okay, this is a brand new term that is uh, Tino fora is a new phylum in front of you, but very easy one. So phylum Tino fora, they show grades of organization as a tissue level of organization. Look. Guys, you might have also seen this, but you might not notice it actually. Because once or twice, you may be uh, to the beach or lakeshore or seashore in the evening. That is during night by 9 p.m., 10 p.m. in night and all. You might have visited the beach and all those things. So at that point of time, at that point of time, you may see the water in a blue color. A small glittering effect in the water at a one or a point of time. Or at particular places, you would see in certain places of water, you might have noticed a bit lights are emitting. They are all examples. They are all coming from this particular phylum. That is the tenophora. It is a particular organism belonging to the tenophora who emits the light. And we observe this blue, red, yellow light. Okay. Have anybody noticed about it? When you be next time to the beach and all those places, please have a check. At late night, if you visit, you will definitely see these organisms. You will you'll not directly notice it because they are actually transparent. Transparent. Their body is transparent, but you may observe the light that they emit. Okay, so you have to study this point. Tissue grade of organization. They show radial symmetry. They show Radial symmetry. I thought of including a video in the next class if it's possible. I'll start the class with a small concept video on this. Okay. Are you all responding? I'm not getting any comments. What happened? Next. They show diploblastic level of organization. That is two levels. Two germinal layers. Okay, that is ectoderm and endoderm. What's Binaya? Actually, I think, uh, actually, I don't know the exact term for it in Malayalam. I think you might have asked the same in Malayalam, am I? I don't know the exact name. I'll definitely check it and tell you. Okay. So, they are acelomate organism. Okay. They are acelomate organism without having any coelom. This is actually the structure. Example for the tenophora. Example for tenophora is pleurobrachial. You don't have to study this diagram at all. They are not given in the NCRT. You have to uh, have a look on this diagram. Not the marking. Because marking at all is not given. And the most important feature is they are exclusively marine. They are exclusively marine. They are solitary and pelagic. Okay, they are exclusively marine, solitary and pelagic. 
they have an incomplete digestive system they have an incomplete digestive system intracellular and extracellular digestion both are present okay both are present in case of such organism i i hope we have taken down exclusively marine they are solitary and pelagic Pelagic means they are found in open places, they are found in open areas, open sea. Okay, incomplete intracellular and extracellular digestion is taking place. Respiratory system is absent, circulatory system is absent. Very, very important. Guys, in porifera, in cilantrata, in nidaria, all those organisms we have found both sexual and asexual mode of reproduction. The only acetylomate, the only acetylomate phylum that performs sexual reproduction is phylum Tenophora. So in that case, they are advanced. That is an important neat MCQ. Previous year question. Okay. So, they ask you a question, which among the following acetylomates performs only sexual reproduction? It is tenophora. They are hermaphrodite. Their external fertilization development is indirect. Okay. Development is indirect. Then, the most important unique feature, one of the most important unique feature is locomotion is by eight vertical external rows. Okay, I'll reduce the echo. It might be a sound from my nearby device. Okay. Okay. So, they have eight external rows of ciliated complates and tentacles is also present. Is now echo is there? Okay, one second, one second. Let me clarify that. Otherwise, yes, now is it okay? Now is it okay? Now is it okay? Now is it okay? Yes. So, locomotion is by eight vertical external rows of ciliated complates. Tentacles is also present. You have to have a clear idea about this eight vertical ciliated complates. Look. Ciliated complates. This is actually the ciliated complates, not the outer one. Outer one is the tentacles. Okay, the outer one is the tentacles. They are covered like this. Okay, eight ciliated complates are there. They have the special ability of bioluminescence. That is, they have the ability to emit light from the body. And this phenomenon is known as bioluminescence. Look, they have the ability to produce light. That is why they are known as bioluminescence. Okay. So, examples is very important. That is pleurobrachia as an example and tenoplana. This is a diagram which is given in NCRT which you have to take down. Okay. okay. What happened, Nimita? You told no what happened you to told no no
is there any issue with the audio or something so plurobrachia and you know plana that phylum is tenophora and the ex plus t plan these are the two ex examples given in the ncrt let's have a quick recap That is, they show tissue level of organization. They show exclusively marine bio. Yeah. So, guys, that's all about in today's class. Bye bye. See you in the next class with the next phylum. Flat worms and round worms.